hey, well, it's a really hot day. It's probably the hottest day of the summer so far. Really high humidity. So I am walking home from a lovely little Italian restaurant where Kenji and I just had lunch and he's going off to his manga comic book cafe for the afternoon. And I see that uh, in my home neighborhood there's a street fair or little once a month summer festival. It doesn't look very exciting but this is probably the only outdoor footage you're going to get on this, the last day of reading rush because once I get home I'm not going to want to leave again. So here is a perhaps not so interesting summer festival. I think it's probably just about over. I think that's why. It's about three o'clock, so it probably is shutting down. Or maybe it was never. How are you? Uh, fine. And you? Good. What's this? Nikumaki uh, onigiri. Oh. In the rice. Uh, outside. Uh, pork. pork. Looks good. I just finished lunch, but <laughs> looks so good. Genki? Mm, genki. <laughs> Chil chili beer. From which country? Uh, Mexico. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> See ya. Oh my. Hey, so I went grocery shopping. I didn't have the camera on. I think I've seen enough grocery shopping for one readathon. And here's what I got. Uh, this actually I got at that street festival. Chili beer from very hot and whoops, have trouble lining things up here. Very hot and spicy from Mexico. I got this from my friend and I made his day because I bought him a beer too. And I didn't get that on, on camera, so you'll have to just have to believe me. But that's something interesting about Japanese culture. When you go to a small uh, restaurant, but certainly a small pub, izakaya or bar, not a chain, but a small neighborhood one, it is extremely uh, good form, good manners, to buy your the manager, the, the waiter, the person on staff, a drink, and maybe more. And that is a big difference. Have you, do you have that in your countries? I was shocked about it. And in fact, I didn't clue in until, uh, and it didn't happen a lot of times. I don't want to create a false uh, image, but I have had the experience maybe five times in my 10 years in Japan where a staff would just help themselves to my alcohol. My, my uh, especially if I had a, a small bottle of sake with my little cup, they would just bring their own cup and, and fill it from that. And that is not considered rude. That I don't like at all, but I have gotten better over the years that when I'm feeling flush, 
not flushed, but when I can afford it, I'm happy to buy, uh, especially when they're people that I'm very friendly with. And so I was delighted to, to buy uh, him a beer today on that hot, sticky afternoon. So that's the first one. That's going in the fridge. Those are cream puffs, and that's Kenji's in my dessert. Kenji's going to make a Japanese curry with rice for dinner tonight, and I'm supplying the dirt. Kenji, for the first year of our marriage, well, we're coming up to a year in early August, but uh, until about a month ago, he was bringing this kind of crap home for me four nights a week. And once I finally weighed myself for the first time since my wedding, I said, okay, no more of this, no more than once a week. So this is my once a week dessert. And there is a fresh salmon for my breakfast tomorrow, salmon and rice. This was a dollar off, so it's time to eat. So I'll eat it for sure tomorrow morning. And uh, usually they have better salmon than this. They were sold out of their really, uh, it's large size and, and even deeper orange and it tastes absolutely delicious. This will be fine though for tomorrow. Those are Kenji's favorite pickles, Japanese pickles. I can't remember what vegetable they're made out of. I actually can't, I don't know, but he loves them. Japanese pickles are pickled only for um, 48 hours or three days or something. They're not deeply pickled like ours are. And they're pretty good. I, I'm not a pickle person, but he loves pickles with every meal if possible. And this will be my afternoon snack. Cheese, I, th I can't remember what kind it is. It's kind of a, a sharper cheese. It's, it's pretty good. This was about three, three bucks. But of course, there's about eight pieces, and each one is individually wrapped. Drives me crazy. But cheese is a precious commodity in Japan. That's it for another. That's a story for another day. Grapefruit juice for my grapefruit sours. I mixed one on camera for you a few days ago, and I only like the yellow-colored grapefruit juice. The pink grapefruit juice bothers my stomach, so. And sometimes, about once a year, for a week or two, there is no ye yellow colored grapefruit juice of any brand available anywhere in Tokyo. And those kind of things happen a lot in Japan. Th things just disappear from the shelves, and they, they really do have supply issues in this country. Um, because I don't know exactly why there's some good explanation, but I don't know. So, similarly, <clears throat> butter. Sometimes is this is uh, four dollars, and it's sometimes really hard to find. Sometimes it just disappears from the shelves, shelves of all supermarkets. But yet it's still available. I remember it's only happened once, and it drove me crazy that I couldn't find it at any supermarket anywhere in Tokyo. And then I finally clued in that it was still available in all of the convenience stores, and nobody was ever able to explain what was up with that. But usually it's not a problem. These are my gas cans because I do all of my stovetop cooking on a one of those portable burners with the crank, you know, that uses gas cans. I used it in my last apartment and despite having a really modern, um, what do you call it, glass covered stove, you know, the, where there's no actual burner, it just, the heat comes through, the, I don't know what those are called, but the, the, the most modern kind of stovetop, I refuse to use it. Kenji thinks I'm crazy, but I know how to cook. Uh, on my old one, and so I buy these. Three of these will do me about a week, and this is three three bucks. Do you think I'm crazy? These are cans of coffee, like you can get from the vending machine, and I bought these. They're so much cheaper to buy at the supermarket, 70 yen each instead of a dollar. I bought them for Kenji, because he only drinks iced coffee in the summer. I still like my cup of hot coffee first thing in the morning and then I drink iced coffee when I'm out and about but I bought these for him because he's buying the rest of the groceries for dinner. I bought him those and the pickles. And lastly, cherry tomatoes. I eat a lot of salad and pasta salad and I use tomatoes in everything so these ones are really good. A little bit more expensive, kind of oblong shaped. They're delicious. About three, three, three bucks for these. I was going to do this. I might as well do it right now. I also want to talk about rice. I have become a bit of a connoisseur of rice in the last few years. And for example, Kenji thinks I'm crazy because he just eats whatever the cheapest rice that you can buy in the supermarket is. 
and I did that for years and never thought any different. And certainly in Canada, I never gave a moment's thought to rice. But I noticed some of my students were saying, and I can't remember which season it is, maybe it's the f fall when the, the rice is harvested and, and a couple students said, oh, I'm so excited. The rice will be so fresh starting next week. I thought, really? Rice tastes different? And now I can totally taste the difference, not necessarily seasonally, but I buy the premium rice and I pay not double, but 50% more for really delicious rice. And Kenji doesn't really support this venture because he doesn't, he thinks it all tastes the same, but I don't. So I can't remember which prefecture of Japan this comes from. I will try to look it up and put it as a text at the bottom. And I ordered it through Amazon, but it comes direct from this rice farm. And it's from an area of Japan where the rice is especially delicious. And I can't go back to eating regular supermarket rice at all. And I'm going to, it's going to be a rice unboxing, people. Are you excited? Because I love the way it's all wrapped up. And especially the bag with the little bow tie. So this is, I think, five kilos. Minato Farm. I, th I believe it's five kilos, but I can't remember. Maybe only two and a half. Anyway, it's a generous helping of rice. And no, I am not putting my no, I'm not putting myself on camera because I'm dripping sweat. Just came in. So this Minato Farm, they always enclose this. And this is a, it's kind of a, it's something you can add to your rice and it gives extra flavor. It's kind of a hard grain. I have never tried it. So now I have about 10 of these stacked up. I've got to try it. You just put it in with your rice when you're cooking it. Look at how this looks coming out of the box. Look at the way that's tied at the top. I love that so much. I don't know why that just makes me feel so special. So you just on you just untie it. There's the rice. This is my rice container. like anything to you but it sure is delicious so that's about half of that bag so that lasts a good three weeks we do eat a lot of rice so that is my little grocery store unboxing are you excited hey guys okay let's wrap this up so I've got my chili beer from Mexico let's see how what that's all about Ooh, that has quite a... So I can taste um, like a lemon juice taste, but quite a lot of spice, like a, like a Mexican spice. I'm not sure if I like it, but let's, uh, let's just see how that goes. All right, so Reading Rush is finished. I'll just give you a one minute summary and then I'll talk a little bit, but I don't want to make this my final vlog of reading Rush too long. I finished this, four stars, Lori Moore's uh, story, Terrific Mother. About 10 minutes ago, I finished this, The Remainder by Alia Trabuco-Zarin, five stars, surprisingly. 
I also finished Rebecca West's novel, The Return of the Soldier. I quite liked it. Four out of five stars. Finished it late last night. Completely forgot to address that in this final wrap-up. I thought it was a bit antiquated, a bit overly Freudian, but quite interesting. Maybe I'll have more to say in this coming week's Friday Reads. And I didn't finish Denton Welch's novel, A Voice Through a Cloud. So I'll start with that one and I'll work my way back to the others. I am loving, I am enjoying A Voice Through a Cloud so much and it's a, in a way it's an easy read. I can pick it up and just fall deeply into it. It's not dense, it's just so be achingly beautifully written that I just... I'm not going to rush people. I think I got to maybe the 65% mark, but I'm not sure because I did was I was going to read at least one more chapter before I wrapped up with this video. And at that moment, my Scribd membership expired. It, apparently it expired yesterday. I'm usually on top of that, but I wasn't. So that kind of forced me to just say, you know what? Uh, I'll renew my, my Scribd membership. I have to go buy a Apple iTunes card and load it onto my account and that'll take 30 minutes to do. Leave the house and come back. That that was the sign. Okay, just stop. So I think I might be at about 65%. So I will, uh, at a much more relaxed pace, finish it up over the next three days. It is just a beautiful novel and I'm going to do a full review of it. So that's all I'll say, but um, I didn't get my six books read, but I got five and two-thirds books read, and I'm ha very happy with that. And the, what I love about this readathon or other readathons are that they just give me a creative space in which to pull books off my shelf or fit books into a prompt. And I had been wanting to read more Denton Welch since for more than a year, and I have, and it's I didn't finish it within the seven-day period. Who cares? I'm just delighted that I'm reading it. Enough about that. I'm also not going to say too much about the remainder, because I've decided I'm going to do a full review of that as well. I have a lot to say. It wasn't perfect. The ending left me scratching my head, but I loved so much about it and didn't dislike anything that I could identify other than that I thought maybe the ending was a bit confusing but no this was a, a joy to read it's not a Sean book and I loved it so I will say more in my review stay tuned and I'm not going to say much about this because I gotta save something for Doris's in my review video but it didn't quite make it to be a five-star read but I was quite delighted with it I liked it a lot four stars so I've had a blast with Reading Rush. Thanks for putting up with my daily vlogs. You're going to get a break. I don't know if those two review videos will go up this week. So otherwise, all I have in the pipeline is my Women in Translation TBR, which I, I hope will go up in the next 24 to 48 hours. Otherwise, stay tuned for another normal Friday reads at week's end. Thanks for watching.